Oh, hello. I didn't hear the gate go. You're back again. Tuning into another episode of Phil's Kitchen. You just caught me tinkering in the garden. Just seeing to this beautiful rhubarb. Mm. I was thinking about making using it to make some tray bakes later. Would you like to come in? Come on, let's go. Alright, so welcome guys. So this week, tray bakes. So, you were going to be doing a mock exam, doing these four tray bakes in class under exam conditions. Now I'm just going to demonstrate some to you. So we've got the fruit slice, I'm going to use this beautiful rhubarb from my garden. We've got the humble rocky road and the humble flapjack. Two very simple tray bakes, but utterly delicious. Now, this rhubarb you saw in the garden, I forced it. So Yorkshire is famous for having the Yorkshire Triangle, which is nine square miles uh, where they force rhubarb and have it very early in the season. This stuff that you saw me tinkering with earlier had been forced. You can see it's nice and pink. The rhubarb I'm gonna use also, I harvested last year, but you can see very green in color. This has been stored in my freezer. I've pulled it out. Now, just one thing to remember about rhubarb. These leaves at the top, very, poisonous so whatever you do don't eat them all right so the base of our fruit slice okay it's got a crumble topping but the base is made from the pastry we made the pastry last week i've got that in the oven it's currently blind baking as we speak now this is just the base of the pastry in the tray so don't have to worry about baking beans anything like that the crumble topping, so it's a very similar recipe to the pastry. It's essentially the half the amount of fat to flour and then half the amount of sugar to fat. However, in here, secret recipe, I've put a few oats in there. But also, because I want this to be a little bit more chunky, a little bit more wholesome, what I've done is I've added a little bit more butter so it'll make my crumble have larger pieces in there. Okay. With this rhubarb, all I'm going to do is, I've taken it, I'm going to add it to my bowl in there. Now, because this has been frozen, some of it is going to require a little bit more flour than normal. However, I'm putting the flour in there, so what that will do is, it will act as a sauce for the juice that comes out of the rhubarb. Okay, the other thing also as well to bear in mind that's going to differ from your apples is that rhubarb is notably more sour. So I'm going to add sugar in there, a little bit more than I would on from what the recipe says, but also that sugar in there as well is going to thicken that sauce, add caramelisation. So I'm going to add a little bit of a secret ingredient to our mix, some ginger. Rhubarb and ginger, a classic combination. I'm going to put a little pinch in there. I don't want to overpower it because ginger is very potent. You could use fresh ginger if you liked, but as well, just for good measure, a little splash of vanilla essence in there and we're ready to go. So I'm just going to give this a good mix around. You can see at this point, it doesn't look very appetizing, but as that then goes into my blind baked tart case and I've sprinkled my lovely crumble on top by the time that's baked it's going to be utterly delicious okay so pastry blind baked I'm going to add this rhubarb mixture in there you can see after adding the sugar after adding the flour it's drawn a lot of the moisture out of that rhubarb now i don't particularly want that in there but i just want to make sure i've got a nice layer of fruits all right one thing that you can do as well before 
preparing this. If it was fresh apples, I can blanch it in a stock syrup and what that will do is it will lock in that pectin inside the apple. So once it bakes, it will actually hold its integrity of the fruit. And then for the crumble on top, so I'm just going to put that on, spread it out, and that's ready for the oven. Okay, right, flapjack. So I've got 210 grams of jumbo oats. I've got equal quantities of butter and sugar, 125 grams of each. Okay, and I've got 85 grams of golden syrup. Now with this syrup, I've warmed it in the microwave straight away, because then now when I tip it into the pan, it's gonna come away nice and easily. Now all the flapjack, very, very simple, okay? The trick is with it, is not to bake it when it goes into the oven on such a high temperature. Because it's very high in sugar, because it's got a lot of syrup in there, if it bakes too hot or you leave it in for too long, it goes very hard, very crisp because of that caramelization. Okay, so I'm gonna wait there for that butter to melt. Okay, now, my fat's just about melted. All I'm doing is I'm just coating these oats, the sugar's in there, and I'm making a lovely, buttery, soft, juicy, oaty mix. All right, now, one of, one of the family favorites is a cherry flapjack. We haven't got any cherries, so for the kids, what we're gonna do is, I've got some lovely little white chocolate um, with sugar, sugar balls on there. I'm gonna add that in at the end, leave, leave lovely little pockets of white chocolate running through that flapjack. Okay, so I've got a a spatula. Um, I say a good workman should never blame his tools, however, he proved me wrong. Anyway, oats there, oh, buttery, golden. I'm going to chuck these little bits of chocolates in. Now, here's what I've done earlier I've lined a tin ready for to receive this flapjack, or jack flap as I like to call it, and it's going to go into the oven, gas mark to. Well, 150 degrees, I'm going to press it into this tin. You don't want it to go too thin, because otherwise you're going to get uh, a really large surface area and you're not going to get that softness and that um, oatiness in the middle of your flapjack. Okay, so oats are in there, I've pressed it in. That's going to go into the oven for about half an hour. So now on to Rocky Road. So a nice, simple, humble, chocolatey, delicious tray bake. I'm starting with some chocolate that I'm melting over a bain marie. Now here, I've got a blend of chocolates. I've got some that's 50%, the average percentage for plain chocolate. I've got a little bit of milk in there, just to knock, take that edge back. But you can add whatever variety of chocolates in there you want. You've just got to make sure that you've got the cocoa solids in there that's gonna be have enough uh, set to the end of your tray bake, okay? Now in there goes some butter. So you'll notice that I've diced it nice and small, increase that surface area so it can melt. In there also, we want about 25 grams worth of golden syrup, okay? That's just about, a, just over a tea, tablespoon. Once that's in there, I'm looking at melting all those ingredients together. Okay, so the syrup, the butter, the different chocolates, and then essentially into this mixture now, you can put anything you like to set. Now your recipe that you've got online says digestives. I've taken some lovely fruity slices that I've crushed up. So you want the biscuits to be quite chunky. So as it sets throughout that biscuit, you get pockets of biscuity goodness, I've got some marshmallows in there, which I've diced up, so you'll get pockets of gooey, marshmallowy goodness. 
but you can put whatever you like in there. You can put cherries, you can put sultanas, you name it, it can go in. All right, so that's melted. That's beautifully smooth and silky. Now, I just need to chuck in those ingredients, mix it round till it binds, okay? So that's mixed. Come over here and see what I've prepared for you. So I've made, I'm gonna make some little tray baked bars, okay? So I've lined two, uh, four miniature loaf tins. And I'm just gonna divide this mixture between the four. Okay, so now all I need to do is wait for these little bad boys to set. So they will set in the fridge. The butter has just knocked back that chocolate, so it'll stay a little bit softer. But ultimately, it's going to be the chocolate that holds it together. I'm going to leave them in the fridge probably for about an hour, an hour and a half, till they set. Yummy. Right, flapjack's ready, nice and golden. I'm gonna leave that to chill on the, uh, the glass chiller shelf here, look. And what we've got ready is the Rocky Road. So I've got some wonderful hazelnut chocolate spread here, which I'm gonna to top them with just as a finishing technique. I'm gonna remove these from their little loaf tins, and as you can see, they look delicious. Alright, so I'm going to be very naughty now. Just when you thought it couldn't get any chocolate here, I'm going to smother this sauce all over that top. Mm. Delicious. You can be really rustic. The humble Rocky Road doesn't mind. It's going to go all down the same way anyway. The chocolate top on there. I'm going to finish with some contrasting delicious stars on here mm. I cannot wait to tuck into one of these so I've got a local builder working with us today it. young man would you like to try one of these? Mm. yes yummy I love these yummy All right, so crumble, tray baked, ready. Baked all nice and golden on top. Again, essential that heat cools properly before I slice into it, or all the filling's just gonna run out of there. And then again, put it by the window to chill. Okay, so crumble slice is cooled. The trick is now, lovely serrated knife, Excalibur as I call him, to slice through that tray bake, making sure you're not crushing it, portioning it up nicely, and then what I've done, I've portioned it, and I've presented it nicely. You can see on there, a beautiful set. Considering that they were pieces of frozen rhubarb from last season, that's the set you want on there. We've got the flapjack, we've got those beautiful rocky roads. Ladies and gentlemen, tray bakes. The trick is here with this tray bake is that you can pick it up without it falling apart. And then here we go. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. A Yorkshireman loves his rhubarb. This has been Phil's Kitchen. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you 
next time.